Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. I hope you're all having a great evening at home there with your family. We've got a really neat show for you tonight, and I'm looking forward to having tonight's guest on with us. And I got a couple familiar faces with me here tonight as well, too. So we'll go ahead and pan out and go straight to our guest tonight. I've got beside me here somebody y'all are probably going to recognize, and this is Mr. Tim Girardi, and he is also known as Mountain Man. And, uh, great to have you here, Tim, and, and uh, be on the show with us tonight. And we're just going to have a big time. And you've got got some stuff here you brought with us. We're going to look at here in a little bit. I got a story. I got a funny story to tell about that too from this morning while I was at the store shopping and talking to Tim. But uh, anyhow, I've also got Mike Adams here with us and Anthony Landreth. Uh, good to have all of you here. Now I'll go ahead and mention. First of all, the reason everybody's in town at the same time, it's, it's real exciting for me because it's my town, you know. Uh, but this weekend we're going to be doing the Tennessee Outdoor Expo rendezvous there at the, at the Wilson County Fairgrounds at the Farm Bureau Center there. And it's there. about time. And it is about time. We've been planning this for a long time, guys, and, it's, and this is going to be a, a fun event. Everybody's in town and we're all raring to go and, and uh, get things going. So we uh, actually, Tim and I had lunch with Wes today and oh, yeah. he seemed pretty excited. I think he's ready to go. He's jumping at the bit, <laughs> man. He's jumping at the bit. He, yeah. he is excited, ready to get things going. I think they've set up a good show, and that and that's going to be a good time. But uh, Tim, I'd like to talk a little bit, a little bit to you, just as far as getting the show started tonight. Just a little about your background. The, the first thing I want to bring up is something that a lot of you guys don't know, and that is how you got the name Mountain Man, and where does that link back to? Mm, yeah, that's what everybody asks me in Louisiana. They say, man, there ain't no mountains in Louisiana. I said, well, the neighbor's got a septic tank buried down the street there. It's kind of a mountain, but uh, no, I tell you, and it's better than being called Swamp Buck if you live in Louisiana, but I got the name Mountain Man from an old Cajun buddy of mine lives back home named Marty Goodday and he tacked that name on me because I was brought up in Portland Tennessee which ain't real mountainous but you know it Tennessee, is compared to Louisiana swamp it, isn't it? it is <laughs> it is but they tacked that name on me and it stuck you know and and uh, I own the name, you know, Mountain Man. <laughs> but, uh, Been there ever since. You know, a lot of people don't realize that you that you did live here in Portland, that you were originally from down this area. Um, so it's kind of like you coming home, you know, coming around here. And you've still got some family in the area. Yeah, my son lives right here in Lebanon. He works at Lock and Bar, and it's always good to see him. Miss that rascal. But, yeah, I, uh, I actually moved to uh, Portland, Tennessee when I was in the third grade and uh, went through the third grade, graduated high school, thank you Lord, <laughs> and went a couple of years to vol volunteer state out here and, and then my journey started. I moved from there to Terre Haute, Indiana. I went to uh, Ivy Tech, Indiana Vocational Technical Institute there in Terre Haute and kind of followed my dad. He got transferred around a lot, working with Midwestern Gas and all. Mm -hmm. So he said, son, you come on up here. He said, I'm tired of you fighting with your sister, and I'll send you to school and get you some kind of an education. And so that's what I did, and graduated from heat and air and refrigeration, and that's that's kind of how it worked out pretty good for you, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it <laughs> worked out pretty darn good. That, yeah. that air conditioning uh, work led you, opened a pretty big door for you, didn't it? It did, it did. Uh, you know, uh, I worked for a chicken franchise restaurant for a while, and um, I drug one too many deer up in Fraser, I guess, <laughs> and one day they decided they going to fire me over it, and I said, okay. So they fired me over it, and I said, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Like I was worried about it, but I got a job. Can't get a job anywhere as long as I had an education doing it, but finally got in business on my own, and and one day I got that call from Willie Robertson to come work on his air conditioner. Hey, yeah, Willie, I'll work on it, and I fixed it, and I gave him a really good deal on it, you know. Willie said, everybody thinks I got a lot of money, Mountain Man. He said, I, 
they always take my money and still don't fix my air conditioner. And I said, well, let me have a shot at it. So I fixed it. And Willie didn't even owe me much because most of his stuff was still under warranty. And he, he appreciated me not ripping him off and fixing it. Next spring, he called me back out to work on another air conditioner. Not the same one, man. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask yeah, you if it's the same one. <laughs> no, that's an old trick. You just, <laughs> just fix for a little while. You yeah. come back and get that's more right. money out yeah. of it, you know. But I, I, I come back and I worked on the air conditioner and got it fixed. And Willie, he was all happy about it. And he said, Mountain Man, come around back in Man Cave. I want to talk to you about something. I said, OK, Willie. So we went around there. And Willie had a big chow in his mouth. He spit. And I remember that cud coming out and then he hit my boot. I said, well, he says, how'd you like to be in a film shoot mountain man? Oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Said, what are you doing next Thursday? I said, oh, I'll be available. Well, I'll call you Wednesday night. We'll set it up. And he did. He called me and we went out to Phil and Kay Robertson's house, his mm -hmm. mom and dad. And that's when they had the yard sale. Yep. I bought that squirrel. That's right. And Willie got it, it back. I made five dollars <laughs> on it though, man. Yeah, but man, that, 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 look, I ain't, I can talk about it now. But the guy was filming, man. He had these old heavy cameras. They say weigh about eighty pounds. But I was walking up that road with that camera. That old boy filming me. He was laughing so hard the camera was bouncing up and down. <laughs> so they had to get me to do it again. Oh, man. I won't tell you that part, but I had to do it again. And, man, that's the best stuff we've filmed so far. And, and uh, it great. just went from there. I was only supposed to be in one episode, yeah. but I got in quite a few and went from an air conditioner man to this guy known all over the county and other counties. and. Heck, my and county, your <laughs> county, everywhere we've been Here. today, people have stopped us and, and That's taken what I was pictures. Say. Even little kids stopped us a while ago and knew who you were. Oh, and, and yeah. Talked about your show. Man, yeah. I had to beat them kids off of me. <laughs> oh, no, I don't beat. <laughs> I don't beat <laughs> kids. Beat I, any kids, kids. I love them kids, man. Yeah, no, that was that was, that was that was really neat seeing their reaction to you tonight. Really, I mean, you know, oh yeah. Uh, but it's so appreciated the way that you that you are. You make yourself available, you know, uh, like you do, and and uh, people really appreciate that. But it is pretty amazing that this the whole story started by going to work on air conditioning. By working you know, on his air I mean, conditioner. Yeah. And, uh, and you've done a lot since then. And we're, we're going to obviously talk a lot more through the night about some of it. But you, you do a radio show also. Yeah. You've done that quite a while Got now. Got the old radio show, Mountain Man Radio Show. It's every Tuesday at 5 p.m., well, 5.06 p.m. Central Time. And... Uh, you can look me up on uh, my Tim Girardi page or the Mountain Man page. I do that Facebook stuff a little bit. <laughs> and then it goes out around the globe on that there iHeart stuff, whatever that is. Yeah. And you can get it on your computers and it just, you know, it, it calls from Australia, yeah. Japan, uh, shoot, where else? I got them. United Kingdom, wherever that is. Israel one time, they need to call me over there in Israel, by the way. I need to go over there and help them out some right now. They need yeah. some help. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, all over, yeah. You've definitely done some traveling with it for sure. We talked about earlier how much, when you first got going in all this, it was just one plane trip after another plane trip, you said, just Three. one town to another. That had to have been a big adjustment, Ooh, you know. Hey, Three to five events. So. <laughs> A week and uh, man, you get off them planes, you better be running to that next, what you may call it, gate. Cause them people know who you is and they keep running down. Well, oh, man, yeah, I want you to hurry here, up here. Here. There, there, come. Yeah. Follow me, I just keep telling them, follow me. There'll be one or two behind me. 
time I got to my gate, there'd be a herd of people behind me. <laughs> you just turn around and start signing I quick, signed huh? it. I got to get on the plane, but I, fit, I had to figure that out after yeah. nearly losing my flight. Yeah. Follow me then. You, you might lose your flight, but I ain't losing <laughs> mine. I ain't losing mine. So I bring a whole gang of them with me. Oh, man. Well, guys, we're going to keep talking with Tim throughout the night, and we're going to got a little fishing talk going up here in a little bit and stuff, too. But right now, let's go on over and do this week's wild game forecast being sponsored by our friends over at Wilson Bank and Trust. Y'all can find them at one of 28 Middle Tennessee locations. Go in and let them take care of all your banking and financial needs and be sure to tell them thank you for everything that they do for us here at the show. Well guys, the the actual forecast for this weekend, pretty warm, sunny. It's going to be nice conditions. Yeah, really warm. But, Anthony, that can hurt you sometimes when you're fishing those bluebird skies. It they? can. It can. It's not as bad in the spring, though, really. Sometimes fall can move. But right now, the water temperature's up. I mean, everything's biting. Well, I mean, brim, shell crackers. I know somebody today that caught 20 uh, shell crackers weigh 26 pounds. Yeah, we got yeah. some shell cracker fishers tonight. They are crackers. They yes. are. They are. Now, You've been chasing the turkeys pretty hard, Man, but hey, it's time for the crappie now, right? Yes, it, yeah. it, it is. <laughs> it sure is. Matter of fact, next week, full-fledged hitting the crappie. Now, Mike, what's going on at Wilson Lake? Well, I tell you what, right now Wilson Lake has been unpacking boxes, <laughs> trying to get moved in and settled in, and most of you know we You hadn't got to just, enjoy it much, have you? We have, uh, we have not wet a line on Wilson Lake yet. I've been there two weeks, but, uh, but it's calling. Man, you're gonna have to get down there to the local marina and stuff. Start getting us some information. Well, that's out my back door. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to wake up looking at it. Every yeah, morning. that works out good. Now, Tim, we talked earlier a little bit about crappie to us, sockeye to you guys, or white perch. What's the timing like that in Louisiana on them right now? Are, are crappie biting good in, right now, or is it almost late for them down there with y'all's temperatures and they're out deep again? They have come off the bed, you know. They they done been on their bed and they done made the beds up and kind of eased on out. You I know, figured they probably did it pretty you know, early with y'all. Slats and stuff, you know. Uh, I seen old John Godwin filming himself on there just raking a man the other day. <laughs> Good night, great old biggins, yep. you know. Uh, that's who knows where they're at, old well, God. Well, on why don't you get him down there and do a sure crappie show with us Sunday? Yeah. Man, <laughs> yeah, but they they biting good now. We got some biggins, you know, down yeah, there. You do. Got you those do. long summers where they can get a belly full of eat. I guess I don't know. They just they get big. They're getting yeah. bigger and bigger, ain't they? Oh, I'm yeah. looking forward to the next few weeks. And I'm like Anthony. It's time to to really yeah. get off the turkeys now and get after the fish. Sure, so, yes. well, guys, we want to remind you to follow us on Facebook. Keep up with us there. We're gonna have a lot of updates for you this weekend throughout the expo and, and letting you guys know how everything's going and come on down there and see us you can also find us at swwtv.com you can find links to all of our past episodes and all of our great sponsors there we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back with this week's pictures of the week and some more southern woods and waters cva's accurate series bagara barrels for guaranteed accuracy nitride for guaranteed rust proofing and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot cba it's just a better gun this segment's being brought to you by third regiment game calls friends family and faith in the outdoors one call at a time all right everybody it's time for this week's pictures of the week they're being brought to you by flowers garden center and deer processing y'all get down there now they're having their 25 percent off sale so go down there and see them at 4550 edens creek lane in, in nashville tennessee let them take care of all your gardening and flower needs and be sure to tell them thank you for everything they do for us here at the show all right, our first picture here, and y'all been following this guy with me through the whole season. Anthony, you're probably going to recognize him. This is Cameron Weddington, yeah. and Cameron guides with us at the Hope Outdoor events. He's been real involved with that. Great, great guy, and we appreciate what he does. But this is his fourth bird. We have walked him through the whole nation, I believe, this year. Yeah. But this is the end of his single season slam, and this one was taken in Montana. So congratulations on that, Cameron. He has had a heck of a season. He's called in birds for other people in these states too, just about everywhere he's been. I think they killed four uh, just the other they day. They did. And remember, he got that coveted uh, tag in Nevada. In Nevada, they that's get right. Four out a year, and he got one of those tags yep. and filled it. So congratulations on that, Cameron. Great, great season, buddy. Mm -hmm. 
All right, our next picture here, this is our buddy Daniel Brown from the Real Deal Guide Service, and he is constantly putting Big Striper in the boat, or, or hybrid rather, I should say. And the other day, they had another great day, and that's a couple of nice fish that I he picked that, up. Yeah. And uh, Daniel, you're always putting them in the boat, buddy. We appreciate you sharing those with us. Now, what you just talked about a while ago, Anthony, that here is some shell cracker. This is Deacon Blair. And uh, Deacon. hey, Deacon been out there showing his daddy how to catch everything oh, here. Oh, I told you on the way down here, Deacon's putting it together. But now. Uh, hey, they have caught some 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 good ones here lately. Uh, I've got a lot of questions over the last little bit about shell cracker and bluegill both, and it is getting to be that time. Yep. It's, they're they're starting to do their you thing. Got sm so. oh, small lakes there already. They are. Yeah, yeah depending on the depth of the week, water, right. depends this on what's going on. This is a stud shell cracker. That is right that's there. a good one. Yeah. <laughs> that is that's a fillet sandwich there. Oh, nice one there. They call them shell crackers, chinky pins. Where I come from. There you go. So now we got. Chinky pins Pins for chinky pins. Pins. I'll have to I've, remember I've that. that. I didn't know that. That's what they are. Them darn shell crackers. Chinky pins. Well, mm. Congratulations on that one, Deacon. All right, and here on the end, now this is all our buddy here. This is our buddy Randall Haley, and I had to share this one. Now, he's killed more turkeys than the avian flu has, yep. but this one was really special to him because this was his first ever solid, true 12 inch bearded turkey. It had a solid, I mean, thick, good. 12 inch beard and that is a heck of a bird Randall he had a good season this year I believe he got four or five he got his bonus birds and and things like that so congratulations he's always putting them in the truck and this year wasn't any different y'all can send your pictures to us here at 474 James Robertson Parkway Nashville Tennessee or get them to me there at the uh, email on the screen or on Facebook and we'll get them up on the show just as soon as we can all right welcome back to the studio Having a big time tonight, guys. Uh, we just we're just talking general outdoors, you know, kind of kind of taking it back and doing a little talking. But um, Anthony, I want to hit back with you just real quick for a minute. We're just talking crappie. It's getting that time of year. It's been a little different this year. Yep. I know it has here. It has. It's been so yeah, muddy. It, it's been so muddy. We've had so much rain. And now, of course, I know where Tim is, but where you are too, y'all have got more shallow water. And it probably stays muddy a little bit, but it's really messed our fish up. But I think over this next few weeks, people are going to be surprised at how good the, the crappie fishing is probably going to be. It's getting that way right now at home. It's, it it, is. Even though they're off the bed, but I mean, once they go off that bed, you know, the females, they're going to go a little deeper than the males are. And, yeah. and normally when they come off the bed, you know, the females are going to go through about a two-week lull, but they're past that lull now, so they're yeah. starting to bite again. Yeah. And, and, I mean, you know, you take something like, especially if you cast it in chunk, and right now that's the best way to catch them, yeah. unless you're in a lake you can long troll. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, and you're looking at the next five or six days, no rain. No, yeah. Temp's going to be in the 90s. Yeah. I think one day they're calling here like 97 degrees. Yeah, water temperature's going to come on up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's going to be a big difference in the next okay. few days. Some of your bodies of water... Uh, for example, Cordell Hole, I'll just throw that out there. I fished there a few days ago. That water is about seven degrees cooler than Percy Precious, for yeah. example, because you're looking at a river system versus a reservoir. That's right. And so on some of your bodies of water like Cordell, where that water has stayed cool all spring yeah, and been washed out, it's fixing to warm up. Yeah, and some magical things about are about to happen. 69 to 76 at home, depending on what body of water you're fishing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So that that's going to be a good a good thing coming up with these crappie uh, bass fishing turning on. Uh, I talked a little bit about it last week, but we had a great day with Bobby Gentry smallmouth fishing. Those fish, you know, they rarely read the script, so to speak. But the other day, they read the script. I and think I you mean, guys had a record. We we day. did. It was that, probably that was the best day. day of smallmouth fishing that that I've ever had. Uh, we had a great day, and and those fish were, you know, they were eating. 15 foot of water, you know, 12 to 15 foot. It was pretty constant where they were at. Um, and, you know, we're like anybody. We've got a whole boat full of stuff out there with us, but we threw two things all day and caught every one of those fish. And that's usually between, the way between a Ned rig and a swim bait, a four inch Ooh. swim bait. And, and every fish we put in the boat, that's quick, what we caught them Especially on. the Ned rig, mm -hmm. crankbaits, and spinner baits. They're on the secondary ledges, but yep. they're, they're schooled up, they are. Yep. you know, big time. Yep. Right now. I got a, mm. a report. Percy Priest, as a matter of fact, some of them are out fishing right now, uh, but they had a great night the other night on Ned Riggs at Percy Priest. Ooh. So just to kind of throw that out there, if you're trying to think what you might try to start out with the next week or so, if you're bass fishing, I would start with a Ned Rig. Because yeah, that has it's, been... It's, the way the temperatures are, in my opinion, it's not going to change much for the no, next week. Whatever no. they're biting today, they're going to be biting yep. a week from yeah. today. Yeah, and they... 
And two, did you see those bluegill we were catching that while we were smallmouth yeah. fishing today? I mean, guys, we were catching huge bluegill on yeah. Ned rigs that appeared to almost be bedded up in about 12 foot of water. I, I mean, they, they were, you know, know and, yeah. but they were eating Ned rigs. I mean, eating them. But that clear Ooh. water, <laughs> it, was, sure. it was pretty neat catching those big bluegill, but that kind of yeah. told us too, they were getting on in there a little more shallow. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that's coming and I love that. Oh, I stocked yeah. up the other day on some crickets and people laugh at it. If you want to go take your kids, especially your kids, right and now. catch a boat full of those shell crackers or bluegill, the crickets, you can't beat uh -uh. a basket full of crickets, Ooh, I'll just tell you. They'll be hooked. Uh, they yeah. will, and, it, and it'll get them hooked. You flip that little cricket out there on that bluegill bed, and it ain't going to sit there long before that old bull bluegill eats that thing up. Yeah, you if know you get the young ones yeah. in the outdoors right now is the time. <laughs> Y'all got some pretty good bluegill fishing down there. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. We've got to catch a lot of them bram, you know, and like you said, you get them kids hooked on catching yeah. them bluegill. I still love it. I, there's something about watching that bobber go underwater. Yep. It yeah. just tears me up. Them <laughs> kids love it just as, almost as much as I yep. do. But <laughs> I say that. Them kids oh. love it more than I do. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I love do. it, yeah. There's nothing yeah. like it. You know, we, we even, one of our favorite crappie setups is using a jig with a float. Use it all the time. Yeah. Keep that bait at the right, yeah, you know, you and, and uh, bluegill eat that too. But I'm telling you, if you just want to go put some numbers in the boat and get your kids on them, take a basket of crickets out there. They ain't five dollars for a hundred of them. You can't hardly find cheaper bait, um, and they can't turn them down. When you flip it up on that bed, he's going to eat it. Yeah, that's right. And, and one uh, little trick on that: if one of that hooks ever show and they won't hardly hit it, but it, you stick. That's it, true. You, you Keep cover it in the, the point of that hook, and you think yeah. it's, yeah. and it wouldn't make a difference. It but does. I'm talking up. You ain't 30 wolfing. seconds of an inch of the point yep. of the hook, they're yep. not going to bite it. They, they don't, don't like it as you much. You ain't whooping. Uh, well, let me ask you this, guys. I, I saw the other day, guy shot a turkey last day of the season. It was full of, of cicadas. Cicadas, cicadas. Full I saw of that. So, y'all think that's going to affect, the, say, the bluegill bite or something this year? Because, I mean, the timing's going to be, the way I see it, if they're eating them cicadas, they ought to eat them crickets up. They do, and not just the basses. I believe the basses normally tears them up more than the yeah. brim do. It's it going to take a pretty big brim, but they can get them in. It yeah. does, yeah. and it might be because of that. I mean, I always like to fish smallmouth. I mean, a smallmouth topwater baits this time of year, but I bet you topwater this year is going to be even better. Yeah, and I notice the cicadas are more out here in Middle Tennessee than they are. They're just now starting yeah. to show yeah, up. No, they're out here pretty good. That turkey. Like I say, I'm you, I, I knew the thing would eat them, but he pretty much had that a crawl a full of one. nothing but yes, cicadas. That's right. Wow. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. And, I, and again, I think that's going to boost at least the topwater bite, at the very least. I believe it will. Yeah, you know, it and, and, that's, and that's turning on. In too. We're beginning to see a few roller flies at, at yeah. home now. I don't know how they are up here right now. Yeah. That'll happen too. So if you get all that happening at the same time, Oh, those yeah. little poppers under some of those willow trees. Yeah, and them it. cicadas, they're going to be here for a while. That's going to be going on when the willow flies yeah. get here. Yeah, sure, sure will. Sure they will. will. And then you're just going to, it's just going to be a big buffet out there <laughs> for them, man. And they're going to be eating. Right, it's so it's, them up. It's going to be a good time doing that. And I'm looking forward to that, and I think it's going to help us with the bluegill season. I really do. I think it's going to help. Because they're already going to be in a about frenzy. The, you talked about big numbers. Nine years ago tomorrow, the 21st, <clears throat> excuse me, Mike Tolley and I boated 176 big brim. Yeah. All on the. There ain't many blue things gear. that eat better yeah. either. Yeah. Oh, you know, I know. Bluegill, oh, yeah. man, you take fillet those little bluegill out, and buddy, they eat. First fine. time I ever had yes, a blister sir. on my finger from dressing fish. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, guys, we're gonna get ready to go over and do this week's product of the week. This week's product of the week is being sponsored by Caney Fork Outdoors. Y'all can find them at cfoutdoors.com or get off I-40 at the Center Hill Dam exit. Go to the bottom of the hill and make a right, and you'll find them at the Big Rock Market. They can take care of all of your kayaking needs and get you on the river. They can also fill your belly up real good, too, on your way there. So tell them, Martin, the whole Martin family, thank you for everything they do for us. All right, guys, we've got another product for y'all tonight that we're going to be offering, and there's going to be some at the show this weekend. So I want to go ahead. Mike, hold that up for us, and I believe they can see that okay. Hold you might have right to pass here. it. This there is, we uh, go. This is our logo. If you've seen us, we all wear our fishing jerseys along. This matches our fishing jerseys and our logo on. It's made by Dove over in uh, Louisville area. And uh, we're going to have these at the show this week, too, and, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, to purchase these. You know, I'm one of those who can't get out in the sun anymore, and this is not a gator for what's going on around here. 
I wear this thing on my ears yeah. and cover my head. I, my was, I was actually talking earlier with Taylor about that. So, you know, the guys it, have been wearing these to keep sun and wind off of them for if years. If you'll dip that in water on a hot day, you'll be surprised how cool you Now, he just stay. went and ruined a good Ooh. tip of the week, didn't he? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, we got a good tip of the week coming right. up, though. Y'all sure. get down there and see us this weekend. We'll have some of these for sale. If we, if we run out of them, and we'll get you one ordered. So get down there and see us for that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to open the phone lines for you and we'll have some more Southern Woods and Waters. This segment's being sponsored by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Join us in preserving and protecting Tennessee's wildlife. Well, turkey season here in Tennessee is over with. And if you're like me, you're counting down the days to deer season. During this off time, we work hard to get everything ready. We prepare our food plots, start hanging cameras to pinpoint where our deer are, and then as time gets closer, what do we do? We start picturing those big trophy bucks and we start dreaming about opening morning, sitting in our stand and putting our sights on our trophy. You know, as exciting as those thoughts are, as a child of God, have you ever thought about what our first day with Jesus is gonna be like? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says that at the sound of the archangel and the call of the trumpet of God, Jesus is going to return. And the dead in Christ will rise first and those that will remain will be called up together in the clouds. And this is the big thing. And it says forever we will be with Jesus. <laughs> that makes an old country boy want to shout. So my challenge for you this week is this. As exciting as it is preparing for our next season and getting our pictures back and preparing for that hunt, I want to challenge you to make sure that you are ready for that first day with Jesus. Make sure your family, your household is prepared for the coming of the Lord because I promise you that's going to be a day that you're not going to want to miss. Hey, thanks for watching this week. We pray that you are blessed. And always remember, keep shooting straight. All right, guys, this next segment's being sponsored by our friends down at Taylor's Archery. Y'all can find them at 100 East Lauderdale Street, Tullahoma, Tennessee, or give owner Tracy Taylor a call at 931-563-7706 and let him take care of all your archery needs. And this weekend, you can come down there and see him at the rendezvous because he's going to be there too. I believe they're actually closing up shop Saturday, so just to <laughs> let y'all know, they're not going to be there Saturday. Uh, which means I guess he's going to let Cam come down there with him Saturday too and have a big time. They'll be so with us for a, while, with us for a while. So come on down there and see him. Guys, we're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines for you, 615-737-7767. If you'd like to call in with any questions or comments, go ahead and feel free to do that. And uh, while we're doing that, we're just going to keep right on talking. Uh, I'm going to tell you all, <clears throat> this morning I was walking around shopping, and uh, I was actually at an outdoor store, and I called, and I, and I was talking to Tim. Matter of fact, he had just called me, and he was saying that uh, he hoped the room service didn't come up here and check out his refrigerator up there in his room. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I said, put my foot I said, up uh, I said, what do you, I said, what do you mean, you know? And he said, well, I said, I got about 20 pounds of crawfish 25. in there. Right? <laughs> and I just laughed. I said, well, I guess you just travel with crawfish, huh? But you do. I do. And you got some here with you tonight. I do. And, They're right uh, here in this here cooler. Cool. We might have to uh, show some folks here in just a little bit the proper method. You can show them the proper method of, of eating one of them jokers. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> oh, I don't know man. it. Yeah. But they, yeah. uh, I know they look good in there. They smell good in there. you got to <laughs> learn to be quick. You're you going to get a chance here just a little bit. Suck the head, right? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll show you. Here you well. Show it? well, let's go ahead and get some callers here. Eddie, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are y'all? Doing great. We appreciate you calling. How can we help you tonight? Uh oh. All right, I'm. I got a question for the mountain man. Sure. I got a. I live in Auburn, Kentucky. I'm a Kentucky boy. I live about ten miles over the state line. Mm. And I'm not from the mountains or nothing. My daddy's from Butler County. My mama's from Russell County. We live on the flat tall, and we got a term around here called Ridge Runner. And I just want to know if you ever heard the term Ridge Runner. Ain't that them shiners that run them ridges up there, moonshine? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Huh? Is it is it moonshine related? Moonshine related? I've heard of something like that before. No, no, no. It's got to do with hunting, <laughs> being in the woods. Yeah, so we got hills turkeys. and hollers around here instead of mountaintops. So we stay up on top of the ridges and look over in the hollers. We see anything, we run over to the next ridge. <laughs> that makes it. Ridge, ridge down, running. down in the hills and the hollers. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the smartest running. place to stay. Yeah, that's a good idea <laughs> there. I, I, I've neaked up on some deer like that. Kind of sneak up yeah, on top yeah, of the ridge. Yeah, I killed my first deer. I was 12 years old with a 35 pound recurve with cedar arrows off the ground. And I've been <laughs> ruined ever since. Man, that's a yeah, good that'll way. Yeah, that'll run you. That'll run you. Good way to get yeah, started. Yeah, I just wanted to see if he ever heard the term ridge runner. Well, he has now and anyway. I, I have in a different <laughs> aspect. Uh, Welcome yeah. to the territory. <laughs> hey, well, I like it. Thank you for calling tonight. Okay, all right, I'll see you later. Have Bye. a good night. Bye. Oh, I thought he done caught me back in my moonshine <laughs> day. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Dean, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. We appreciate you yeah. calling. Yeah, yes, how sir. have you tonight? Yeah, I, I was, I caught the end of that uh, hunting cracker talking a while ago. Uh-huh. What parts are they biting right now? I've, I've heard good reports on them on just about any local lake. Uh, I know a guy that has caught several on Del Hollow, and we did see some beds up there while we were smallmouth fishing last week. Uh, Old Hickory Lake, they've Kentucky been catching lake. several on Old Hickory Lake, and Kentucky Lake are the three lakes that I've heard the most about. Uh, but most any of your local lakes around here in the same temperature range it's going to be happening at about the same time. Yeah, seeing some of the same so it's coming. Uh, it's coming right now. You know, yeah. if you want to find a smooth bottom, like Mike mentioned, you know, a sandy smooth, something smooth, and you'll if you have graphs or don't, if you'll just look in the water, you can see it almost looks like little holes in a sponge. That's is the best I can describe it. And if you see those spongy looking bottom, you found them. Like smaller bodies of water, they're bedding right now. Yeah, they are. They're yeah, like right over in now. West Tennessee, like Garrett Lake, and some of those are smaller bodies yeah. that have a lot of sand in yeah. one end of the other. They're catching quite a few. Yeah, it's they right. are. They are. Get out there and get you some crickets or red worms, either one, you can wear them out. If you want to, you can use a jig, but crickets or red worms are going to catch more. Catch more than a little old uh, baby crawfish. We're getting feedback. Fish. We've got to cut that one out. We've got feedback there. Thank Grass you for calling. Grass rail. A little bit of beetles. Yeah. Tony, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great. We appreciate you calling. Well, I just wanted to know, uh, when you carry your deer out to the expo uh -huh. and you leave it, uh, do you get it scored then or do you come back or... How does that work? It depends on the timing of when you arrive as far as how many they're backed up on at the time is how quick they'll score it. Now they will start scoring, I mean first thing four o'clock tomorrow afternoon they're going to be on site to start scoring. Um, so that'll just oh, depend oh. as far as how many they have at the time when you come. And Tony if you have to okay. leave it, if you have to go, we are going to have somebody patrolling that area. You'll have security, nobody's going to mess Absolutely. with you. Absolutely, 24 hours. Yeah, yeah 24 hour security on it. That to be well, considered the best that, of the show. I, get that, I, just stay I, I watched the show last weekend and I got you know, on the plate and I ended up, I drove up there last uh, Friday and they had a dance contest going on. <laughs> well, did you and win? Like <laughs> and I had big deer in the truck. You know, but anyway, uh, I'm going to bring them out. But, right. Uh, you, they, I thought it was from 8 in the, or 9 in the morning till 4. It's 9 to, four, nine to 7 Saturday mm -hmm. and 9 to 4 Sunday, but you can only bring your deer up until 3 o'clock Saturday. So you can okay. bring them from what? 4 o'clock I mean, tomorrow to 8. Are y'all there tomorrow? Right? We, yes. Yes, they'll be there tomorrow starting at 4 o'clock. So you can drop them off tomorrow evening from 4 to 8, I believe it is, and Saturday so from 9 to 3. 4 tomorrow evening? Correct, yes. Uh, uh, okay. And just come I, around I to the right. There, I would have been an idiot again because I was going to drive up there in the morning. So <laughs> now come up here in the so evening about 4 o'clock. 4, 4 and on. Yep. All right, I'll thank you. All right, have a good night. Yeah, okay. Thank you.
Daniel, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing fine. How are y'all doing? Doing great. We appreciate you calling. How can we help you tonight? Uh, oh, thanks a lot for having me on. Uh, sure. We need some more game wardens or wildlife officers. I live in Smyrna, close to a uh, closely placed up here, and it's like mm -hmm. the Wild West up there. Anything goes. So I've watched them catch undersized crappie and hide them under rocks. It's nothing all to be up there and see boats put in the water with no registration numbers at all or registrations of years old. Uh, you know, it, it kind of hurts me to, to take and see that. Uh, I've always tried to take and go by the law. I always taught my boys to go by the law and, and do the right things, but it, it kind of hurts me to see it black as it is now. I understand that, and, and that's the best thing you can do is just follow the law and, and teach them to and, and do your part. It, I will stress that if you see something like that going on and you know there is a violation in progress, I would contact them. But on, on their side of the story, I'll tell you uh, that most of our counties in Tennessee, some of them only have one officer yeah. and some only have two or three. Um, so when you think about, uh, say for example, you're in Davidson County, I guess there, um, no, or, or Rutherford, no. okay. Well, see, they've probably got two officers and so they've got to cover every farm, every piece of public land and every bit of water in that entire county with those two officers. And they do a great uh, job, they work their tails off, but if you see something like that, it's best to call them because they're liable to be on the end of the county doing something, you know, so. Well, they are trying to hire some are. right now. They I do are. Know that. They're hiring some, but yep. there's only gonna be enough budget for one to two officers. There's some counties have one officer, it depends on population, yep. so. I understand that, but you could easily, uh, pay an officer's salary in a weekend for the citations you've been You could. Hey, I agree. Go well, check some of the rainers. Well, it takes a year, though, to get one trained up to be out yeah, on the zone It does, eight now. months. That's right. So, well, we need to start. And that's <laughs> that's right. right. They're that's looking right. for some right now. They're taking applications <laughs> right now. They are. Well, we appreciate we'll you call calling you. tonight. Uh, all right, then. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Have, have a good, good night. night. All right, guys. We've still got some callers there. We may try to get to a few more. But right now, we're going to go and go over and do this week's tip of the week. It's being sponsored by our friend Wes Stone over at Cry Like Realtors. Y'all can find him at 1432 West Main Street in Lebanon, Tennessee. Or give Wes a call at 615-444-8200 and let him take care of all your real estate needs. He, he can flat find you whether you want a farm or a residential home, whatever it is. Wes deals with it all. And as y'all know, he's a big time outdoorsman just like us. So give him a call and let him help you out. Tim, what kind of tip you got for us tonight? Oh, make sure you carry some toilet paper with you when you go deer hunting. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's a better one. Than that, that is a good one, though. Yeah, that's a good one. That's good. One. That's good. Yeah, better than leaves. I know old guy used poison ivy one time. That didn't work out. But you know, a lot of times, kids or anybody, they can be out deer hunting and going in in the morning or. Uh, late in the evening coming out, you know, and suppose your flashlight goes out and you're walking in dim light. And there may be another deer hunter set up over here or over behind you up to the side and they hear that noise and, you know, a lot of them are pretty antsy to shoot some, mm -hmm. especially deer in either sex. You know, they don't have to look for horns, yeah, they just uh, boom, you know, but you know, one way to prevent that is to make a noise that a deer don't make. If you've got a stand on your back that's made out of metal, don't be afraid to clang that metal a time or two, because any, anybody's deer hunter, they know the sound of a metal yeah, right. in the woods, you yeah, know. Yeah. Or a whistle something, you know, a whistle or <laughs> something. I don't know about coughing, right. but I think I've heard deer cough. I have too. Uh, yeah. I've heard deer cough. cough. But yeah, you might get shot coughing. That's a, you think, <laughs> That's a good you think the corona I mean, is bad, you get shot deer hunting for coughing. Yeah. But uh, look, you know, clang something, make a noise or whistle or something. You know, do something, make a noise that a deer Make sure they know you're human. Yeah. That's right. It's a good, yeah. great yeah. tip. We yeah. appreciate you sharing that. Guys, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be back here in just a minute with some more Southern Woods and Waters. CVA's Acura Series, Agara Barrels for guaranteed accuracy, Nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CVA, it's just a better gun. 
This segment's being sponsored by TriGreen Equipment. Stop in and see them at 21 locations in Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. They can take care of all your Honda, Steel, and John Deere needs. All right, everybody, this next segment's been sponsored by Courtney's Restaurant and Catering. Y'all can find them at 4066B North Mount Juliet Road in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Or give owner Tom Courtney a call at 615-754-7548 and let them take care of all your delivery or catering needs. All right, welcome back to the studio. We're actually going to go ahead and grab one more call here. We're going to jump over here and say hello to Roger. Roger, how are you doing tonight? Oh, pretty good. Headed to Nashville, out of Memphis. If it's, I'm going to tell you, if this traffic on 40 has got any indicator of how many people going to be at the show, it's going to be hard to get them all in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, they're all lined up just trying to get in there, huh? Yeah, man. I've been, I left my house about 8, which is, I, I left two hours later than what I wanted to, but. It, it was rough getting Still fighting your way in. Guys, this is Roger McCall. Y'all probably recognize him. He's going to be on a show with Hope Outdoors uh, with us here in just a few weeks. Going to see some of his footage. And uh, Roger's coming in town like so many people. I've been called all day to the house. I'm on the way. I'm leaving Leaving now. We're going to get there. So you're going to be here about the time we get out of here, I guess, then, ain't you? I'm going to try my best. <laughs> all right. But, yeah, I'm going to try my best. I'll but I, I do have one question. Yes, yeah, sure. Anthony. Go ahead. What time is Cracker Barrel in the morning, Anthony? I don't know yet. <laughs> Whatever time they want to. Cracker Barrel. And, I mean, it's right there across the road. You, from you, know, I'm you know, Anthony can't get near a Cracker Barrel without stopping and eating. <laughs> Especially for breakfast now. I got I like to have a good breakfast. That's right. We went to Texas, and on the way back, we stopped at every Cracker Barrel between Texas. <laughs> He carved his initials in the table. Yeah. That, didn't he? Come on. That's right. Well, Roger, we appreciate right. you calling, man. We'll talk to you soon. Be safe the rest of the way, buddy. Uh, All right, bye. Yeah, Duck's wishing he could have came. Yeah, we're well, gonna miss you. having Duck down here. No, you got on the D3 hat tonight, and yep. your Duck Madeira, he's a good buddy of ours, and. It's just crushing him. He ain't gonna be down it here is. this weekend. It, is. it really is. I talked to him before, before I went and met y'all to go to the ballpark, and that's what he said. He said, "Man, he said, I sure wish I was down." Just, just tell him <laughs> yeah. he find another job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> now, hey, it's he'll he'll find another job come deer season, like he does yeah, every he's year. He's working it out right now. <laughs> yeah, for that. yeah. he's got to work during the summer months so he can quit his job <laughs> come deer season. Oh me, well. Tim, can we grab one of these things out of here? You reckon we you can sure wrestle one loose? We can. I've Mike, been eyeballing Mike, that. Mike can wrestle one out of there. Let's see what's what in there. there. See what's in there. I'll show there. you guys how they, how, what he travels with here now, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, yeah. Man, what you, you talking about? You want me to just cut a little hole in the back? Well, let's right? see. Uh, they got to just get it on this end where we got to get them out. He's a Louisiana crawfish. Oh, you got it. See if we can cut that string or something or another. Now, you've got a guy that you said does these up for you. He boils them and everything. Yeah, old Randall over in <coughs> Monroe, Louisiana, across the Washtenaw River. Where are he you, He could boil them up. Wow. I say, yeah. You've never had one. Never He's had there. That's pretty good. A little bit, little bit smaller. Show them a couple of these. There, right there. These you there are Louisiana crawfish. You, you, do it. you won't see them like I that around here. No, <laughs> they have been bigger, but these are decent size. Yeah, these are these are good. Probably some. Now light. this is. Yeah, but you better hold it over. Well, so I was right. gonna say I'm gonna hold here, it over. Set it right there. And you can show everybody. Okay, Just set it over that pie. It's fine. No, That's last right. year's hunting guy. We don't need no, it right Okay. Now. See him. The way I do it, and everybody's got their own way of doing this, but look. I kind of squeeze just a little bit it. here. Yep. Kind of jiggle that tail just a little bit. Look yonder. I pull out all the meat out of that there head. And uh, you peel off. Like a couple of these here old hard shells. He's already gnawing on it. <laughs> I'm already saying Mike knows what he's doing. Like you got a pinch down there and you pull it out. And uh, there's a perfect piece of meat. You eat that. Look here. That's what you call a poop bang. You don't eat that. <laughs> pull that out. 
And look, that yellow fat, that's some good eating there. Now you mentioned that earlier, you said you want it to be about the color of mustard pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you can get some kind of green or brown, and they can be catching them out around a sewer pot or something. These here, they probably come out of down south, Louisiana out of them rice fields. You eat that yellow fat, actually they sell that down south. Louisiana, and they make dips and stuff out of it, so you can surprise your guests with these uh, fat dips. So, if you guys come down to the show this weekend, you're trying to find Mountain Man, just follow the smell of the crawfish, <laughs> and you're probably, I'm going to tell you, it smells real good. I it do. really does. It smells no, delicious. No, it's not going to hear from Well, we're going to let them eat some crawfish. Pantry, <laughs> hey, get that meat and, out of uh, your We're going to get ready to but take now, a quick break. But tell me, and they've always told me to it's get something out of the head. We'll be right back. This segment's being sponsored by Drake's Creek Outdoors, a unique, affordable way to display your trophies. All right, everybody, this week's calendar of events is being sponsored by Burdine Supply. You guys can find them in Mount Juliet, Tennessee at 6966 Lebanon Road. That's about a quarter mile west of Highway 109. Y'all swing in there and see owner Vincent Lanning and his crew. Let him take care of all of your residential and commercial plumbing needs. And he has got quite a lineup of outdoor products down there now, too, including those new muddy blinds. And he's going to have those at the show for everybody to look at this weekend. And they are really nice. So, guys, with lumber prices up right now, it's not a bad time to look into one of those blinds because it's they ain't much different than building one now. Nowadays. All right, well, I got a couple things to announce. I'm going to start right here. This is going to be, I'm going to let y'all see this just for a second in case you go back and look at this later, but I'm going to read off of it. This is the Circle P Ranch over in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, in, in my home area there. But they're going to be having a, a big fireworks display and show coming up on July the 4th. That's going to be my buddy Tom Needham's going to be putting that on, and I'll be on the, on the pyrotechnic team down there like I always am. They're going to have a cook-off, barbecue cook-off, chicken, steak, boss and butt. But here's the big deal for us, too. There's going to be a kids fishing rodeo. It's also going to be part of the event. That's going to be from 10 to 5, and you guys need to contact our buddy Dayton Blair for that. He's at 615-347-0236. He can get you and your kids signed up, and y'all be ready to go on that. Also, the Benton County Bass Revival, that's coming up here soon on June the 5th. We kind of mentioned that a little bit last week, and that is going to be to put Florida strain bass back into Kentucky Lake. So exactly. that's going to be a really yeah. neat deal. Uh, looking forward to that. Of course, y'all know, we've mentioned it a couple times, get down to the rendezvous this weekend and see us at the Wilson County Fairgrounds. That's going to be Saturday 9 to 7, Sunday 9 to 4. If you want to drop a deer off, you can start doing that tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. So get down there and see us. Be sure to say hello to all of us. And uh, even Miss Emery yeah. will probably be yeah, out there. I picked her up uh, hitchhiking on yeah. I-40. <laughs> yeah, she right. was She's living over here. Tim, thank you so much for being here tonight. We well, really appreciate it. Appreciate if y'all get on that water this week, put your life jacket on each and every time. Get home safe to your family. We'll see you here next week for some more Southern Woods and Waters.